We often get so busy in our lives, we sometimes forget to look up and marvel at the night sky. Filled with stars, planets, occasional comets, and phases of the moon, it's a reminder of how vast our universe is and our place in it. But we may not always know exactly what it is that we're looking at, that's for sure. And that's where our next guest can help. We want to welcome planetarium expert Ralph Crew of the Carnegie Science Center. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me today. I'm so happy to have you. I think this stuff is so fascinating. Yeah, brought a lot of really interesting uh, astronomical equipment with me today. Right. Um, and, and, and some of the stuff you can buy for your own use at home and some other Absolutely. things maybe a little bit more yeah, for so the we professionals. Brought, we brought telescopes at various levels okay. um, depending on how much you want to get involved. The first thing I recommend if someone's interested in getting involved in astronomy is actually just binoculars. You have really? a couple of binoculars in front of you. Okay, so what's the difference between these <laughs> and these bad boys? These ones you almost need a, a tripod to use, but this is like this is, pretty typical and yeah. believe it or not, if you can put it on a really Samir, steady I'm surface, looking at you. Uh, binoculars just like that, you can even see the moons of Jupiter. Really? Yeah, just with these? Just with those. So it's a really good first step. Now this is sort of a backyard telescope, something you might take camping with the kids. Uh, it's called a refractor, uh, and it uses lenses to focus the light. It's very similar to what Galileo would have used back in the old days. Very neat. Um, so this is something that's really accessible. You can get one of these for one or two hundred dollars. And you can see things like the moons of Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, really good stuff. Now if you want to wow. see really far away things, this big one, behind you is where you're going to want to go. Now, this, this is impressive. This is actually smaller than the one we use at the Science Center. So we have our Skywatch program where we have an even bigger one of these on our roof. Um, mm -hmm. and that's open to the public, which I think is pretty cool. So if you can't afford one of these, it's several thousand dollars. Right. Um, and unlike this telescope, it uses a mirror to gather light. So it's called a reflector. Um, and it can track an object in the sky, hold rocks steady on it. And this is something that would be really good for taking pictures of things like the Andromeda Galaxy or the Orion Nebula are really far away, really beautiful. Where's celestial. the Andromeda Galaxy? The Andromeda Galaxy <laughs> It's only about two million light years oh, away. It's just a short drive, and just, just no big problem. Yeah, just a bit of a hike. <laughs> okay. And what about this gold one over here? This is neat. So this one is one of my real favorites, and this is something that even a lot of astronomy geeks don't have. This is a solar telescope. Um, so we use it to observe the sun. Now normally it'd be really, really dangerous. Right. right? You would never, you should never point, you should never even just point your unneeded eye at the sun. This, however, has special filters, and I don't know if you guys can see inside the lens here, you can see the color of it. It's got this ruby red filter. Right. And that blocks out almost all of the sun's light and restricts it down to one color, um, a reddish color, that allows us to see fine details on the surface of the sun. That is so neat. We actually neat. do this every Sunday of the summer uh, in a program called Solar Sundays. Uh, at the Science Center. You can just walk up and we do it outside uh, any day that it's sunny. So. Well, and you mentioned Skywatch, so let's talk about that because that's coming up uh, in a couple weeks in May. Yes. You do it once a month? We do it at least once a month. Sometimes okay. we do it even more than that. And uh, you can t take a look at our website to see the sessions. Now, the next one is on the 19th. We have an 8 p.m. session and a 10 p.m. session. In May. In May. Yeah. yeah. And so what do you do at Skywatch? Do you point out? All sorts of cool okay. stuff. So we use both the planetarium and our observatory on the roof. So we have a telescope um, that we can use, but if it's cloudy, which, you know, it's Pittsburgh, so. Right, it happens. <laughs> uh, if it's cloudy, then uh, we can use the planetarium to show the stars. So no matter what the conditions are outside, we can always see stars, planets, and more. We have a lot of great planets coming up. Uh, Jupiter, uh, the biggest planet of all, is gonna be really in great position to observe by May. Uh, in July, we'll get Saturn, and then uh, in, well, actually in June, it's Saturn, in July, we have Mars. And we'll actually have our closest look at Mars that we've had since 2003. That's so really neat. Really cool. Well, and I, I did not know this. I think this is so fascinating. Yeah. Tonight, you're going to be able to see something pretty cool in the sky. Yes. So if you look uh, shortly after the sunset, around 8.30, uh, a little bit before, uh, you'll see the International Space Station tonight. And the weather's perfect. It's going to fly up over uh, near the planet Venus, starting in the northwest, and go right over our heads. It'll take about six minutes to cross the sky. And you don't actually need any of this stuff to see it. You're just going to be able to see it with the naked It'll eye. It'll be brighter than any of the stars in the sky. And it's, really? you know, it's got astronauts in it right now. It's a really It's a neat cool concept. Thing. Okay, and so, so we're going to see just a uh, light just kind of passing? You'll see a bright point okay. of light appear over the horizon and slowly rise across the sky. Now, it looks slow, but it's actually going 17,500 miles an hour. Wow. 
Yeah. Six minutes to pass by us. Okay, and let's talk about two scientists walk into a bar because that's an upcoming event. Yeah, this one's a lot of fun. So uh, we have several scientists mm -hmm. that are going to go to 30 bars around the city. So each one of these bars will have two scientists. I actually get to be one of the scientists. I'll be at the Rivertown Bar. Awesome. Uh, and that's on Friday night. Uh, and basically anyone can come up to the scientists and ask science questions. So it's a great opportunity. Um, to, in an informal, kind of relaxed environment, come mm -hmm. and talk about science with some people who actually know what they're talking about, which is a lot of fun. That is neat. Yeah. And people a little, maybe a little loose after people a beer loosen up, or two, they right? Ask the, they well, sometimes people are nervous to ask a question. Yeah, You know, right. they feel like self-conscious and, you know, it, it, it's hard to get people to come out of their shell. But once right. they do, they get really curious and it's a, it's a really fun program. Well, so nice to have you. Thank you for having me. Keeps my curiosity by coming on today. And you can come see the planets for yourself at Carnegie Science Center every month at Skywatch. The next one is coming up, as you heard, on May 19th. Before that, have some happy hour fun at Two Scientists Walk into a Bar. That's tomorrow for adults only. And remember, you can always hear from Ralph and his partner on the Science Center podcast, Science News and Cues.